What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an interesting upcoming AMD powered mini PC from a company known as XDO. This company isn't new to the mini PC scene. XDO has been around for a little while and they've produced some successful mini PCs. They usually launch them over on Indiegogo and that's exactly what they're going to be doing with this unit here. This is their upcoming Pantera 2, obviously a sequel to their original Pantera mini PC, but with this we do get a much more powerful APU. And what we're taking a look at in this video is one of the kits that they're going to be offering over on Indiegogo. So this kit does come with a lot of travel accessories. But overall, I mean, as you can see, we've got a really odd design here when it comes to mini PC form factors. Still coming in really small. It does have some RGB up top and a built-in OLED display to give us some performance metrics while this mini PC is running. So with this Pantera 2 kit, basically what we're going to get, obviously, is the mini PC. They also offer a fold-out keyboard. USB Type-C cable, USB Type-C to HDMI hub, and this also has full-size SD card, some extra USB ports, the smallest wired mouse I've ever seen, HDMI cable, USB Type-C to HDMI, and our power supply. So yeah, I could definitely get used to the look of this thing sitting on the desk, and with this, they will be offering a few different color variants. Obviously, we've got the white version here, but they've got a red, green, light blue, dark blue, and an orange to go along with this white. When it comes to I.O. with the Pantera 2, up front here we've got a full-size USB 3.2 port, USB Type-C, and this one up front is actually 3.2. We've also got a 3.5mm audio jack, micro SD card slot, not much going on around the sides, a little bit of ventilation, but moving around back we've got our power input, full-size HDMI 2.1, another full-size USB 3.2 port, gigabit Ethernet, and USB 4 port that runs at up to a 40 gig protocol, so we can connect an eGPU to this mini PC. Real quick, I wanted to give you a look at that screen up front. Basically, what this is going to do is give us the fan speed, CPU temperature, and it's going to pull the time of day. And I'm sure you've noticed we do have a little bit of RGB up top. It's got this acrylic panel, and it does light up pretty bright at nighttime. I've got my lights going right now, so it might not seem super bright, but it just kind of cycles through all of the colors. XDO will be offering a couple different CPU variants with their new Pantera 2 mini PC, but the one we have here actually surprised me. When I got this, I kind of got it unannounced. I wasn't exactly sure what this was powered by, but as soon as I booted it up, I noticed we had the AMD Ryzen 7 8840U. 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.3 and a boost up to 5.1. Built-in Radeon 780M iGPU based on RDNA 3 with 12 CUs, and this will clock up to 2700 MHz. You can add up to 64 GB of DDR5, and this is so dim, it's running at 5600 MHz. We've got one Gen 4 2280 M.2 slot. It's got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and this was running Windows 11 out of the box. Jumping right into the BIOS here, I wanted to see if we could change anything. And from advanced, yeah, we do have a few options, but it is kind of locked down when you compare it to other mini PCs on the market. Uh, GFX configuration, one thing I wanted to do was set this to 8. Out of the box, it looks like we're at auto, and it'll do 6 gigs. But I'm going to go to UMA specified, and we'll take this up to 8. Moving back, we've got our CPU configuration. And from here, we don't have any real way to adjust the TDP from the BIOS. Now, there are ways around this in the BIOS. If you use something like Smokeless UMAP, we can access all of those settings. But I want to see what this thing will do out of the box. I mean, we can go in and disable the core performance boost, hyper-threading, things like that. But usually, with a lot of these mini PCs, we do have the option to kind of adjust the TDP directly from here. Other than that, I mean, we've got all of the basics here. Uh, security, secure boot. So yeah, it is kind of locked down when you compare it to others, but... Uh, we're going to see what this thing can do, so let's get right into Windows. So far with Windows 11, this thing's been performing really well, but I do wish we had some more BIOS settings. As we saw, not a lot going on over there. But as you can see, we've got that 8840U, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600, and of course we've got the Radeon 780M graphics, and from the BIOS, I did take it up from 6 to 8 gigs of VRAM. And it will allocate more, as you can see right here, up to 13.6, but I like setting it at 8, plus we've got 32 gigs to work with already. Now the one thing I noticed here about this little mini PC is the TDP. And with the 8840U, yeah, it's definitely a lower wattage APU when you compare it to H series, but we've definitely been able to see this chip kind of boost up really high. With this system here, run a stress test with CPU-Z right here. I'll get in a bit closer. 
54 watts, but then it comes on down to around 45. And I completely understand. It's definitely got a smaller cooling system than some of the other mini PCs in the market, given the form factor of this unit. So at 45 watts with that 54 boost, we should still see some really good performance here. And I did see the temps on this hit 91 degrees so far with a little bit of testing. And by the end, we'll take a look at all of that. But even with that APU running at 91 degrees Celsius, it's able to stay between 42 and 45 watts. So, I mean, performance here isn't going to really be affected by those higher temps. And as we know, with these newer chips, I mean, they do run a bit hotter, especially in a small form factor like this. With that out of the way, first thing I wanted to take a look at here were some benchmarks, and then we're going to jump right into some gaming, because I do think we're going to see some pretty decent performance out of this mini PC with that 780M iGPU. First benchmark we have here is Geekbench 6, coming in with a really nice single core of 2379, multi 12,132. And at this kind of wattage, I mean, I expected to see something like this, so it is on par with other mini PCs with the 8840U. Checking out the iGPU, 3D Mark Night Raid, 23,570, and I have seen higher out of these mini PCs with the 8840U. And the final one here is Time Spy with a 2,516. Now I think what's kind of holding us back here from scoring around 2800 with Time Spy or even up to 3000 is RAM speed. This uses SODIMM RAM and we can only get up to 5600 megahertz. But with the benchmarks out of the way, it's time to test out some gaming. Starting out here with Cyberpunk 2077, we're at 1080p low with FSR set to balance. So we're over that 60 mark, but every once in a while you will see it dip down. And if you take a look at Afterburner in the top left hand corner, we're anywhere between 45 up to 50 watts. I mean, usually around 48 there. And like we saw, this does have a sustained TDP of 45. And the CPU temps are also listed here. While gaming, I have not seen this thing hit thermal throttle, but in some extreme tests while maxing out all eight cores and 16 threads, yeah, it's definitely possible with that smaller cooler. Next on the list, Forza Horizon 5, medium, 1080p. We don't need any kind of scaling with this one. It's just a very well optimized game. But in the past, on this same chip with faster RAM, we're running at 5600, I have seen this up in the 90s. Either way, still really playable like this, looks great, seeing an average of 84 FPS. Doom Eternal, 1080p, medium, and usually on these iGPUs I do turn on dynamic resolution scale because most of the time with lower end integrated graphics we're going to need a little bit of scaling, but with this we're at a true 1080p medium settings. Afterburner, top left hand corner, built in game metrics up in the top right hand corner. This runs really well. Taking that resolution down just a little bit, let's say 90, would bring us up past that 70 mark, but overall it's very playable like it is. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart 1080p medium with FSR 3.1 frame gen on. I've been doing a lot of testing with frame gen and fluid motion frames. This is a bit different because it's built into the game. But on this 8840U with that 780M iGPU over a 35 watt threshold, frame gen or fluid motion frames really helps out. If we were to just run this without FSR medium 1080p, we'd be seeing an average of around 51 FPS, so it does really take it up. Going into Overwatch 2, I really didn't have a doubt we'd be able to run this, it's just kind of a matter of what settings we're going to be using. And right now we're at 1080 medium at 100% resolution scale. So we're seeing an average of around 86 FPS, and I thought it would be just a bit more. If we could add a little more wattage here, or just get a sustained 54 watts, we could be up in the 90s with it, because with that CPU, it can clock up much higher. And the final game I wanted to test here was God of War Ragnarok, and with this one we did need to enable some frame gen. Now if you take that resolution down, of course we can get more out of it and kind of disable frame gen, use a little FSR, I'd say go to balance with it. But with frame gen, it's still pretty decent here, and even like this, I may take it down to 900p just to get a little better fidelity out of it.
Couple things I like to monitor while doing my testing on these mini PCs are CPU temps and total system power consumption. So when it comes to CPU temps, average across the board while doing all of my testing, we were at 69. Looking good here, fan doesn't spin up that high, but it did hit 92 degrees Celsius while running the Time Spy benchmark. Fan comes on, it's not super loud. I mean, I think it was probably hitting 100% trying to keep it nice and cool, but we've got a very small form factor we're working with here. While gaming and doing everyday normal tasks, we never saw those kind of temperatures. That was more of an extreme test. And the final thing here is total system power consumption from the wall. In some areas, energy just costs more than others, and this might be a big concern for some people. At idle, we were pulling 12 watts. Average gaming, up to 62. And the maximum that I saw this draw while running a couple different benchmarks was 74 watts. So it's not crazy, and if you wanted to limit this a bit, you could use third-party software inside of Windows to take that TDP down. I mean, it's really up to you. But the way it's sitting, I do think that this is a good performer. Definitely has an oddball look to it, and that's exactly what they were going for. We see a lot of mini PCs released every week, all square boxes, nothing crazy going on. So to set themselves apart, they did want to add that screen and a little bit of RGB. I'll tell you, I'm not exactly sure when the Indiegogo is going to launch, but I will leave a placeholder link in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, like maybe uh, SteamOS, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for a first look at the Pantera 2. And like always, thanks for watching.